Podcast. Yeah. Welcome everybody to Clang the Podcast, now sponsored by the wonderful people at DRC Shipping. What do their services include, Pete? So they include warehousing, pick pack fulfillment, air freight import and export, ocean freight import and export, road freight to and from all major European cities and their pharma specialists. They've also uh, got a specialism in publisher services, so exporting magazines and books worldwide. Fantastic. For all your shipping needs and the export import business, DRC Shipping, everybody. Check their website out. Now, enjoy the podcast. Welcome, friends. Welcome to episode, Pete, uh, five. <laughs> it could be. Who knows? Welcome to Clang the Podcast, everybody. Uh, we're rolling now with guests every week, which means, luckily for you, that it's not me and Pete who just waffle on forty-five minutes. We've actually got some interesting content. Actually, um, mate, can I just say a few people I've spoken to quite like that. What? Just me and you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I've told you to stop ringing my mum, and oh, if you don't right, stop okay. ringing her, I know, I know, okay. I'm sorry. Any, any hoo hoo. This week we've upped our game, hence why smart shirts. And oh, I must, I must, I must stop. Excuse me one second. There you go, mum. All right, my mum told me off for chewing gum, and um, and my cousin as well. So uh, there you go, Andrew, back in. Anyway, this week we have an absolute superstar. We have the voiceover queen herself. Uh, you may not know her instantly from a visual, but you would have, I guarantee you have, would have heard her on an advert or possibly as the voice of Lara Croft. It's the BAFTA winning, wonderful Shelley Blonde, everybody. Woo! Hello! Ah! Oh! Look what I've got in my hand. One of the There's funniest nothing... books I ever read, and that's no lie. How are you, well, boy? We're good. Can I just introduce you both, uh, Shelley, yeah. Pete, Pete, Shelley? Pete. See what I did there, Pete did. Shelley. Lovely, Pete Shelley. Yeah, shouldn't exactly. we get away? I've maybe, maybe, one. maybe we should get him on sometime. Um, oh yeah. Well, now, so now we've named you. Can him. I just can I, can I can I just kind of preempt things a little bit here? Did I see a, a sort of matching cup floating around there in the back? You did. Oh yes. I Amazing. Am. Amazing. Yeah. See, we've upped our game. You've upped your game. A little bit of a thing for matching. When I do uh, a voiceover job for Global or Heart, I use a Global or Heart mug. When I'm doing a Tomb Raider thing, I use a Tomb Raider mug. And today it is animal. It's, it's also product placement, Shell. Don't try and fool people <laughs> and the fact that you're doing things on a whim. Well, it I does... bet your whole wardrobe is just synchronised, isn't it? Between top and mug. Top it and does, mug. It does, it does make me think maybe we should get some Clang mugs printed. <gasps> yeah. Oh, did I one? Would... Uh, we could sell them, mate. That's yeah. a great I idea. One. Okay, well, no, you get a, no guests get a free one, but you'd obviously have to have the matching t-shirt sure. combo. For sure. Mm. That means you've got to get t-shirts as well, Pete. That's another thought. A whole other oh, thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, on that on on that note, Shelley, lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. I've so now I've I've known Smiley for I'm going to say 28 years now. <laughs> we haven't spoken for 20 of them. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a theme going here because I reckon Smiley and I didn't talk to each other for 20 years. So, I mean, clearly that's how you remain friends with him. Maybe, maybe it's the lost years. Maybe it's like my, my barren years <laughs> where I just, I just got lost in the wilderness like, um, like uh, Bambi. Anyway, just to fill in, fill in the blanks to the ladies and gentlemen out there, Shelley and I met, um, as you say, possibly... 20 odd years ago uh, through the Mock Turtles. I was uh, the tub thumper four. You were going out with Martin, the, the guitar player. So. And in the later years, I, I interviewed the Mock Well, I didn't interview the Mock Turtles. We had you on Trouble TV in my presenting days. We got you on um, and I was too nervous to do the interview. So I got Otis Dealey, my co-host, to, um, to do it for me. Uh, we had you on Trouble TV as well. I was I was also really nervous that day because suddenly I I'd, I'd been parachuted into this very very cool band being the Mock Turtles full of very very cool people of which I didn't feel as cool as them so I was a little bit kind of uh television Martin Coogan uh 
Joe, the keyboard player, who was the coolest woman ever, and she's absolutely lovely. Um, so I was a little bit kind of at the back. If anybody ever sees a copy of that show, it's you being really nervous, passing questions across, and me sitting at the back, not blinking for 20 minutes. So were you uh, actually were you, were you actually starstruck then? I was Smiley? totally starstruck. Listen, that's, that's the first. That's unusual for you. That was the first time when I joined the Mock Turtles. Uh, Martin Coogan, anybody who's met him, yeah. has an aura, doesn't he, Shell? Yeah. He's, he's, he's super he's cool. cool. He's super cool. Smart and funny as a whip. You know, he's just yeah. But but you fit in totally with them all. Totally. Heart of gold, I'm, sense of humour of a king. I'm telling you. Well, I'll, t I'll take that. I was a little bit, a little bit of a mouse then, but I'm a little more, more of an elephant now. Um, <laughs> so obviously, uh, the other, the other thing at that point, talking about the starstruck thing, was obviously Martin Coogan is technically the brother of the third funniest Coogan, that being Steve. <laughs> That's correct. Funny because the the funniest <laughs> is Brendan. The second funniest is Martin. And then Steve slips in third, doesn't he? And that's true, viewers. Honestly, Martin and, and Brendan, the funniest two people with their mank humour. You you cannot sit, you cannot have a conversation with them without like hernias, belly belly <laughs> laughing. They are just oh, they're brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Whereas Steve is very you know sits takes it all in. You know mm, that's very funny. I'll take that. I'll use that. <laughs> you know. Oh, Steve, I, I've sat around a table with Steve around Martin's house once. And we were just having a cup of coffee, and and I remember clearly saying something funny, of which Martin burst out laughing, and Steve sat dead, dead straight face and went, "That's really funny, that is." Yes. And he, and and I thought, is he making a note of that? All I said was, "Ah ha," you know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your favourite? What's your favourite Norwegian band? Hmm, tricky. Yeah, he, he, he never used it. I've got a story about that because I had a friend when I was dating Martin, we used to go every Christmas to his uh, parents in Wales and we would always have Steve up and we'd invite loads of friends and Steve was one of them. And I won't mention her name, but one of my friends came one year and she didn't put two and two together that Steve was Alan Partridge. I, I don't know, but she didn't. So every t she was obsessed with Alan Partridge at the time. And every time she walked into a room in our little, you know, no. in Wales, she'd walk in and go, oh, ha! <laughs> oh, it was every time. And he'd be sitting there like, what's going on? And we'd be like, no, 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 no. And yeah, I had to tell her, you know, that's, that's, that's actually, yeah. that, that is. <laughs> uh, the, last, the last time you spent Christmas with her, I take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Because I think, Cheryl, I think the last time we met was at Top of the Pops. When we did Top of the Pots with the Mock Turtles, we did uh, Can You Dig It back in the early 2000s. And um, you were there and uh, and Kerry was there. And because we met Darius. Do you remember Darius, the pop star? Oh, love Darius. Yeah. And, and he was he was he was a proper pop star and he was really <laughs> nice. He was really tall. Proper. And I remember that's the, I think that was the first time I ever saw my wife dribble in public. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Because he was, he was a bit of a kind of heartthrob. Yes, you know? he was. He was. I mean, you've done Top of the Pops. That's unbelievable. Top of the Pops. I know. I know. And that popped up the other day as well. Someone got a copy of that. And, and, and yeah, it's not, it's not the best. It's by nowhere near the best performance ever. Uh, it's not one. I watched it kind of and went, oh, my God. And and never and and just didn't watch it again. That was it. Game over. But I've heard, so, I've um, heard people say that Top of the Pops is kind of a little bit disappointing when you actually yeah. get on there and do it. Is it not? It's soul destroying, really, because I, the first one I, well, the first one I did, I thought, this is it. I've my I've made it. I've made it. And it was with Robbie doing Old oh, Before I Die, and what you had to do. So so I got like the um, the blacked out uh, Mercedes turned up in 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 the stains massive about nine in the morning and I strolled out in my cape and got in, got driven to Elstree or wherever it was and used to have like a sound check, camera check in the morning and then it would go as a live show, but live-ish, in the evening. And then, so we did it, there's no one there apart from camera people and all that, so you do it and then the rest of the day you just spent in, in, in the other dressing rooms, basically right in this, yeah. by looking in and going, oh my God, you'll never guess who's in the next room. Wow. And then when, when you went on, it was like massively disappointing because it looks about there's like four or 500 people. There's not, there's 50 people 
and the camera angle is it makes it look bigger and more kind of full and and exciting and also your your miming exactly right and a lot of people say well how do you mime this is how you mime it's like it in a table they put pads on the drums they put two cymbals together little tip for you there folks which makes which makes the doink noise so obviously they go ah, i'm ready la, 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 robbie williams and then ah, and it goes nah, nah. and you have to do this fill which kind of goes like you're playing a table, right? Wow. And I'm thinking, this is not fooling anybody. And and I'm and I was the worst mimer ever. I had this trick which I I thought I'd honed over the years where I would look to my left and kind of laugh at the person laughing back at me, thinking the cameras are gonna catch me, right? And then someone sussed me out one day and just went, I was there and I saw what you did and you looked to your left and nobody was looking back. And Aww. I did this like, ha, 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 you know, carried on. Part of the magic. It's part, I mean, we, nobody watching Top of the Pops would have known that. We, we all knew eventually it was, you know, mind. But, yeah, oh, it's it, magic. It, it's a magical thing. And I don't want to shatter anybody's illusions, but it's not around anymore. But they are showing them again, aren't yeah, they? They are. On BBC Four. And it's Mock Turtles time as well, the original the original one. So that's been shown. I think, um, yeah, and they look great. They look great. But anyway, but, um, anyway, we're not, we're not, we're not really here to talk about you and Top of the Pops, <laughs> are we? We're here to no, talk, we're about talk about Shelley. So, so, Shell, listen, let, let's introduce you properly. You are uh, a voiceover artist, an extremely successful one. You've also been an actress. You are the voice of famously Lara Croft, the original. And tell us what you did last week, Shell. Anything interesting regarding kind of uh, Lara Croft? Five letters, begins with B and ends in after. Last week, boys, I was invited. Hugest honour of my career. It was a goal that I didn't even know I had, a career goal I didn't even know I had. I was invited to BAFTA to present an award for new intellectual property. Um, it was BAFTA Games, and I was invited because I'm the original voice of Lara Croft, mm. but also because that week in a BAFTA poll, um, she was voted the um, she was voted the most iconic video game character of all time. Isn't wow. that something after 28 years? I was going to say after such a long time, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously I recorded the voice when I was five, and. <laughs> 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 skin skin of the rich yeah <laughs> she's still at the top of gaming conversation she's still at the top of gaming and and topping polls so it's it's quite unbelievable she really is is iconic because because of that um and it's it was such an honor for me honestly i mean never did i dream i'd be on a red carpet never did i dream i'd be at the bloody baftas and it how was did you get lara croft how did that come about so I, um, I was very new to the to the voiceover game. I was very much a, a West End theatre actress, musicals, you know, all singing, all dancing. And I was in a show, Only the Lonely, about Roy Orbison um, playing yes. fine. But I also had to play other characters, so I did different accents. And after one show, a voiceover agent came backstage and said, you know, um, have you ever, have you got a voiceover agent? And I didn't. And they said, well, we'd love to take you on. And then a few weeks later, I got my first job, which was for um, the BBC. It was an animation called Total Reality. And, um, and then, the, the, then my agent rang and said, listen, they're looking for a voice for a character called Lara Croft. And you probably won't get it because it's, you know, they've been looking for six to nine months. They're very specific. But it would be great for you to get some, you know, auditioning experience. So I said, count me in, whatever. So they faxed me over a rough sketch of her. And then I pressed, you know, play and record on my cassette oh, player, and I recorded the lines they'd sent me, welcome to my home, um, things like that. And, um, and then I sent it off in the post, as you did back then. Four or five wow. days later, they asked if they could do a conference call with me, with IDOS and Core Design, some in Derby, some in London. And uh, I did a few more lines over the conference call, and then they told me at the end of the call I got the job. And that was my second wow. job. Wow. It was... Wow amazing i mean for me it was just a job i was thrilled that i that they'd been looking for so long and thought i was the one you know that's a big ego boost you know but for me it was just a job so i didn't realize until 
I don't know, a good year later when I saw her face on the uh, when I saw her face on the front cover of the Face magazine, and mm. had to you know um, commercials and, and and interviews with American newspapers and and um, that I thought this is something really really different. This is something, you know, quite special. Well, I guess at that stage, no one would have known it would have exploded in the way that it did. But I mean, so I've got, I, I do have one question for you on that. Go how, on. Do, how do you handle the adulation of the thousands of kind of hundreds of thousands of male teenagers that have been listening to you over the years? <laughs> I, well, there's a funny story about that because my husband was one. He, <laughs> <laughs> he it with me. So... Um, Actually, I don't get too much male adulation, but yeah, my husband, my husband is 10 years younger than me and he would play it in his bedroom. And then we were well into, well into dating, possibly engaged before he found out I was the voice. Then he was, he went, you know, white and was just like, what? Are you please, to- please, please tell me, explain that moment. Cause I want to know <laughs> where you were and how you suddenly dropped that bomb. I don't know. I don't know. How, I, I remember we were in Ask Pizza something like that or, or pizza express something like that and um and i just mentioned it i don't i don't remember and uh and he went wide mouth wide open he said i used to smash you into walls to hear you saying no 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 <laughs> he has to listen to that every day now i was uh, gonna say <laughs> that has the same effect <laughs> but- that's amazing so you used your newfound fame to snare a good looking younger man let it be a lesson to you, kids. There's a, you've got to have a goal in life, and that's the way you do it. That's, that's brilliant. Well, I hope your clangs are as good as that. Uh, Peter, would you like to enter us into the realms of question number one? Yes, I mean, obviously, the, of, of the, so the first question, and you've dropped, you know, you've dropped some pretty spectacular clangs already, and there are a couple of things, you know, I, it's, it's, I can imagine certainly having done Trouble TV that you've got some interesting stories floating around the background. I don't know how many of those are repeatable, um, but what's your, what's your best clang? Um, I would say my very best clang is Fred Astaire. Okay, that's a good one. <laughs> oh man, the bar we've set, Pete. This is of the first three or four episodes is unbelievable. Go on then, tell us your Fred Astaire story. I got a Fred Astaire, and I'll raise you a Whitney Houston as well. Um, Oof. So, so if Fred, um, I was I was seven years old, and we were very lucky. We we're lucky enough to go to stay with my auntie, my mum's sister, in Los Angeles. And when we were there, I found, you know, the stars books where they show you where stars live. Um, I don't know if they still I've have. I've been on one of those. You've got her. Um, <laughs> I've been on one of those. Trip, isn't it? Go around the houses. But um, uh, I saw Fred Stairs in there and I said, I will forgo. I don't, I, I'll give up Disney, Disneyland. I'll give up anything you want. But I just got to go to Fred Stairs' house because I grew up watching him. He's the reason I wanted to be all singing or dancing and him and ginger rogers and so my uncle said you'll never get to meet him but i'll take you there i'll take you don't worry so he drove us there one morning we got out the car piled out the car my two sisters my parents and myself and my uncle jack said i'm going to stay here because there's no way you're going to get to meet him so he waited in the car we walked on up this huge driveway up to this enormous mansion no no security no nothing and these big doors ahead of us and we knocked at the door rapped on the door and a a little maid came out the side and asked us what we wanted and we said we've come here from london just to meet fred astaire is it possible she said oh i don't know if he's home i'll go and check so we were just waiting there in his courtyard and all of a sudden the doors opened inwards and i mean enormous doors like enormous and he stood there in this blue shirt a grey pair of pants, pleated pants, with a scarf around his waist, like a you know, like a tie or a scarf around his waist. So cool. Wow. And he just kind of time stepped down the down the stairs. Oh, for me it was like. Oh, God. Did he did he dance down the steps? Or are you making? Are you are you kind of? I promise you, he did a side shuffle down the stairs. Wow. He stood chatting, and he was the loveliest gentleman. Just, I love to meet my fans, and it's so wonderful. And thank you for coming and coming all this way. And and um, my dad asked for a photo, and he told he, it, we had the photo with him. And then he touched my little baby sister's cheek. She was one, and she was like, I "Don't like that man. I don't like that man." Um, <laughs> and, you fool. and um and we had a photo with him. My dad said, "Oh, Shelley does tap dancing." I did a time step for him. No. We had a little dance together. You danced. You danced for Fred Astaire outside his house. 
I've got his ginger, I'm his blonde. Oh, wow, see clever. I, see who did there. See what I did there. See who did um, there. And, uh, and then when we got home from our trip, obviously my Uncle Jack was gutted. When we got home from our trip back to London, we sent him the photo and all the um, front covers of our hardback books about Fred Astaire. And he, signed, he sent them all back signed. Wow, man. That's lovely. And that's, you know what? That's particularly lovely because so often you hear of celebrities being complete, well, not complete knobs, but, you know, being yeah. sort of, I mean, you know, you, you hear pe- people like Tom Hanks is supposed to be lovely. No, there's never a duff story yeah. about Tom Hanks. But, you know, yeah. it, it's it's so nice when you hear these people are genuinely, he sounds like a genuinely nice guy. Especially when someone's trespassing on your property. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, Fred, there's a load of people at your door. What are they selling? I think that the little one's a dancer. Hang on, loves. Let me put a scarf around my waist. Da, da, da. Or get the get on my property. Yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's seriously, man. We got a no shell. Like, we have had some A listers, man. That's right up there with Buzz Aldrin and Paul McCartney. You know. But, you know, I I feel like, that you know, there are rules. You know, if some, apart from going to somebody's house, if um, if, someone's <laughs> eating, if someone's eating, looks like yes. a conversation, don't just, dis- yes. you know, they're allowed their private time. However, yeah. if you yeah. come off stage and people have paid to see you, you come out, you say hello to the, you know, to people waiting for you. If mm. you're walking down the street and somebody says, oh, would you mind, can I have a, I mean, you should do it you and, and do it. We all have off days, but do it as graciously as you can. And if you don't want to, just say, I'm so sorry, mate. I, I just, I'm really not feeling it today. Would you mind? And, and just, but thank you. Lovely to meet you. But really, you should, you should, you should try. There's, there's, there's definitely ways that I remember back in the Robbie days. Yeah. Sure. Um, or chapter 11, as it's also known. Um, I remember when we were on tour and one, this was quite early on. And uh, we stopped like at a service station or something late at night and to get something to eat. And he and I walked in, and and this girl just went, "Oh my god, it's Robbie Williams!" And he, you know he had a pair of tracksuit trousers and his hood on and all that. And she's like, "Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture?" And or was it a picture or an autograph? And he went, "Do you know what? Bless you, I'm not doing that tonight. But thanks anyway. All right. Anyway, she was like, "But I just..." And he was like, "And he." Bought his crisps and he went back. We sat in the back lounge and I clearly remember it. I didn't say a word and I sat down and he just looked at me and just went, what? I went, what? He went, go on, just say it. And I said, we want me to really say it? And he said, yeah. I went, you can't do that, Rob. And he went, why can't I? You do. You have a day off. I went, I know, mate, but I'm not Robbie Williams. I went, that is her only shot to see you. And if you are going to be this superstar... And you are going to put yourself in a public place, mate. You are going to have to give back, right? And he was like, and then the next morning, God bless him, he said to me, yeah, I've thought, you are right. You are right. And I'll, 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 I'll you know, lesson learnt kind of thing, which is true. They still have their people that they want to meet, like a Stevie mm. Wonder, you know, if Elvis was, if he'd want to see Elvis. And how would he feel if those people were, you know, no, no, Robbie, yeah. I, I'm not in the mood. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly right. But there's a way, isn't there? As you rightly say, if someone's sitting having dinner, you know, I, I've seen it. I've, I've, and, and, and I don't know about you, you two, if, if you've ever been in the presence of like a famous person that you're kind of working with, do you get really protective of them? Like you're kind of shielding them a little bit as if like, you know, and you don't need to at all because they're they're all big and ugly enough. The person, because if they're gracious enough, you don't have to. You know Mm. that you can kind of, that they will be able to fend off people themselves or be lovely or whatever. I think I'm more like that if the person is a little bit shitty, to be honest, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, But can I just say about what you said about Robbie, one of the wonderful things about you is you're so, you're so you, Smiley, no matter who, who you work with, you're so genuine and, you know, he's surrounded by, I'm sure still, by yes men and you're not Mm. a yes man. You're, you're a, you're a mate and you will act, you know, you're a very talented, brilliant musician and a team player, but you're also a mate. So you've got no problem. You've got no qualms in saying, that wasn't that wasn't the way to behave, mate. And he listened because of his respect for you. Yeah, maybe that was just before he sacked me. So um, good point, Joe. <laughs> yeah, maybe not say it next time. You've met him, haven't you? Didn't you know him? Yes. Um, well, I don't didn't know him, but that was a lovely story. But um, I, I used to be quite friendly with Zoe Ball, 
uh, because she was very friendly with Martin Glyn Murray, our contact. And there was a period when we were hanging out all the time and going to all her house parties. And I went to her wedding, etc. And one one time it was my 20, it was 27th birthday. And um, she, I invited her and she said, can I bring a plus one? So I was like, yeah, whatever. And in walks Robbie Williams with her. Oh, who was, he was in the middle. As you do. Well, oh, you know. <laughs> He was in his dip, so he, he'd left take that and hadn't brought out freedom, etc. Um, right. So he was, he was in his lull and I think, you know, had, had a battle with confidence. And um, he came in and was just, just bloody beautiful at the party. And then as it was wrapping up the party, he said, why don't a few of you come back to my house around the corner in Notting Hill? Um, and that was my manner too. So we were like, yeah. So about 10 of us went back to him. It was one where he sat and played angels, he sat and played songs for us, and then him and I went in his kitchen while the others were just kind of smoking and doing whatever they do. We went into his kitchen, I went through his very sparse cupboards and made a <laughs> dinner, really sparse. Um, I remember that, yeah. And made a lovely pasta meal for me and him, and we just sat there, sat there eating it. And then, I didn't see him for ages, and then I was presenting on Trouble, and was asked, Trouble TV, and was asked to do Soccer Six, and he was one of the m major guests on Soccer Six. And there was MTV and all these team, you know, crews trying to go, Robbie, 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 Robbie. And he was sitting there warming up. And I was just like, Robbie, Robbie. Yeah, as if he's going to... And he kind of... Robbie! Like, Robbie! Robbie! Robbie. Robbie. <laughs> pasta! <laughs> pasta Shelley! And he looked at everyone and he, he did it like, kind of like that with me. Uh... I'm the only one he allowed interview, to interview him. And I'm pretty sure it was because he remembered my face. And then every time we saw each other in, in our manor, which was Labrick Grove, Notting Hill, he'd always give a little, it was always a little, and I've, I've got a very big soft spot for him. Very big. He's lovely, man. He's lovely. And I know, I know people have got their own views on famous people, and, but he, he genuinely is, is a sweetheart. I, I talk to the sweetheart, Zoe Ball, have you kept in touch with her? We've got, we've got a massive respect for Zoe, haven't we? Oh, we, we heart Zoe. She's... She's, she's lovely. She's genuine, beautiful soul, down to earth, lovely, lovely, lovely girl. We've tweeted from, you know, tiny amounts, but oh no, I haven't, I've, um, I think the last time I saw her, I was, I don't know, I don't know, it's got to be 20 odd years, 20 odd years, but a lot of time for her. She is, she's, she's terrific and yeah, she's brilliant at what she does and I, and I adore her. Did you ever go to the house in Brighton? Her and Norman's? No. Did you? <laughs> yeah. But but it, 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 it's, it's where it goes a little bit down the back alley. I always I was always obsessed with the you know the row of houses. They had, there was like a private row of houses right on the beach in Brighton. It's towards Hove, right? There's about twelve of them, and allegedly one was Paul McCartney's, one was Adele's, one was Norman Cook's. Blah 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 blah. Right. Anyway. A couple of years ago, my mate Shaggy, who was the drummer with the mission, he said, oh, the next time you're in Brighton, mate, give us a shout, come to my house. I was like, all oh, right, where are you living? He goes, oh, I'm living in Norman Cook's house. And I was like, what, not the one on the beach? He said, yeah, he said he bought three of them and he basically rents the old one out. Wow. And I was, and I was, he's like, when you're next in Brighton? I went, about an hour and 20 <laughs> minutes, mate. Like, I'm come on, Lolly, we're going to Brighton. So... <laughs> Anyway, so we went to Brighton. Anyway, pulled up, and I knew exactly where this house was, and it was the the Norman and Zoe house, the party house, yeah. right? And um, anyway, I'm looking out, and there's the the beach and all that. And then he says, "I'll oh, come upstairs. I'll show you something. You'll love this." Went upstairs, and his studio where he wrote all the big hits. Wow! It's, wow. it's like a museum. Wow! It's like oh. old Atari computers yeah. and and just like tapes and cassettes yeah. and 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 I was just blown away. And then he went, wow. "Oh, it's something even cooler than that." And we. We went outside and we had to climb this little ladder. And on the roof is a massive yellow smiley face. Oh, huge. Kind of like 30 foot wide. Oh, oh. Because apparently loads of, loads of like paps used to kind of, you know, fly over because they were really hot at the point, weren't they? So me and Lolly have got a picture of us on the roof. On this. Oh, I love so, that. I'll send you the so picture. So your, mate, your wow. mate Shaggy was living there. So was he literally yeah. living in the house and Norman Cook's going, well, you, you, you can live in the house, but, but you've, you've got to yeah, keep yeah, no, no. X, Y, Z kind of as it was. Yeah, I think Norman yeah. Norman bought three, I think. And he, I think he, he, he knocked two into one, so he lives in it. Oh. And the other one he rents out to Shaggy oh. and Mrs. Shaggy. Um so yeah, it's. Did you see it's... there? Did you see like um 
Mike Taylor and Lottie, they they um, they bought him a, one of those smiley faces, neon light for their wedding. Was that up? I don't know if you saw that. No, probably because and, there was there a, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then I I got them. Um, I got a beautiful print of the two of them with their heads together, and then I did that Andy Warhol thing. You know, the the four prints, and I made that in a frame, and that was wow. their wow. Yeah, Mark. Oh, that's, that's so cool. cool. That's yeah. so, so cool. Unless there I'm, you go. Unless Good I'm to, horribly well, mistaken, um, at the beginning of this particular clang, you mentioned Whitney Houston, Shelley. What's the deal? What, so what's the deal with Whitney then? So Whitney, as you like to call um, her. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I went to a party with a friend of mine who, who was invited to the Clive Davis. I think it was, in, I, if I can remember rightly, it was the new album of Whitney and Clive Davis was putting on a big, big party for her. And it was full of, you know, All Saints and this one and that one. Fabulous party. But um, I went with my, we didn't have, you know, mobile phones in those days to film everything. I just went with my, you know, the, that big <laughs> wind on camera. And uh, Whitney walked in. You know, it's like, it was glorious. She's glorious looking. And I said, Whitney, would you mind terribly? Could I be used to have a picture for her? And, and uh, <laughs> she gave me the filthiest look. And her her minders grabbed both my, you know, because I took out my camera. They must have thought I was going, getting ready to shoot. And they put both my arms behind my back, held me there. Oh, my God, it was so painful. It's mortifying as well. But Bobby Brown was like, no, no, get up and get up again. She just wants a picture. She just wants a picture. In the middle of the party. Embarrassing. Um, and he was lovely. And she was like, okay, okay. And in the picture, she is like, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> terrified. Absolutely terrified with two broken arms. No, two bruised, bruised arms. And he was, Bobby Brown was a doll face. I like hearing that because I think Bobby Brown gets a really bad rap. He really does. He, he, really, he, he was, was a gentleman. He was a sweetheart. And uh, yeah. I think he gets a lot of blame for her and it and it was it doesn't he, he gets the blame yeah. for Whitney yeah. becoming what she yeah. became yeah. I think that's a little bit harsh yeah, personally not, not all fair we don't we don't know the full but story have you, have, 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 have you still got the picture we... I have really? still got the picture Oof. yeah yes can you send it to us because what I... we'll do is we'll in the next episode we'll show it <laughs> well obviously okay. obviously like send, us, send us a copy don't send us the original that would be that would be sort of too risky yeah I'll show you my fat boy Slim's <laughs> roof house picture. You know what I mean? All right. So, yeah. happy to, all right, we'll exchange. We'll, we'll exchange. exchange. Yeah, no, so I was going to say, so Shelley, obviously, you know, Trouble TV, you've got, you know, you must you, you must have had loads of run-ins with famous people over the years. And you, I'm, I'm imagining you've got a shed load of stories. But I suppose, aside from obviously, aside from obviously meeting Smiley, um, have you ever had a moment when you were completely starstruck by somebody? Um, I don't know that I have had a moment. Oh, no. I, do you know what? I used to work at mm. the Cobden Club. And the Cobden Club was in Labrock Grove, and it was a private members club. And I was on the door. Sometimes I was on the coat check. Um, but on the door, we had uh, you know loads of celebrities coming in and out. And one was Keith from the Prodigy, and he was, ah. honestly, he was everything you don't think he's going to be. You know, you think he's going to be trouble and a, and a real bugger. He was so polite. He was so lovely and warm and cuddly, cuddles, you know. And I I, I really, I, 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 I found myself completely like, oh, da, 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 da. You, didn't, you didn't take the lighter off him or anything. Just say, you can't bring that in here, mate. Not with your <laughs> reputation. <laughs> I think you I was so sad when he passed away because I just, I just got lovely, lovely, um, lovely image of him in my head, just being so cuddly and gorgeous and really, really a real sweetheart. Totally the opposite of what you would think he is, just because of the way he looks. Don't judge a book by its cover. But really, yeah. really, you know, we used to get oh, we had Elton John in. That was quite, that was uh, quite fabulous. I hung up Elton's coat, very heavy coat, um, but he came in uh, for a party. Uh... Um, yeah, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I can barely remember yesterday. So, but they're, boy they're, bands, girl bands. All Saints, a lot. Spice Girls. Uh... Ah! All right, now we're going. Now we're going down a tunnel. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you first, Cheryl, and then I'm gonna ask Pete. Who is your favourite Spice Girl? I'm gonna say Jerry, just for just um, really real, really earthy, really sweet, really just um... lovely. 
Lovely. I like hearing these. I like hearing people saying these things. Yeah. I hate people saying he or she was an idiot because you want them people to go, oh, they were lovely. Yeah. Who's your favourite Spice Girl, Pete? Uh, sporty. Love Sporty. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I'd, 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 I'd had a big soft spot for her. And also, I think that she, to me, she was the one that had the best voice. Yeah, I'll give me that. Mm. I, I think I think Mel B had the, has the best voice personally. Uh, really? But, yeah, but I, but I think they're all equally lovely in their in their own way, and um, yeah, I love. I, I, I've always thought I've always thought they were the perfect twenty percent of the of the person. So like the Spice Girls, if you take twenty percent of each of them, they're the perfect date. Just that really? they've each got twenty percent of perfectness. You know what I mean? He went on 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 Robbie's first date with. I did go on Robbie's first date. Robbie's first date with. Well, Robbie. Well, we, we were we were recording in the countryside, and he's and he as he used to do. He go, oh, I've got a date tonight. I go, oh, brilliant. Who's that? And he went, I'm all saint. I went, wow, amazing, man. And he went, aren't you going to ask me which one? I went, no matter, does it? They're all great. And I went, is it an Appleton? He went, yeah. I went, amazing. So anyway, about two hours later, Nicole Appleton turned up. The loveliest, sweetest person you will ever meet. Drop dead gorgeous. And be- before that, anything kind of first date happened, um, Guy Chambers was like, ah, you sing. And you sing. Uh, we were recording strong at the time. And he said, uh, do, you, do you mind just going in and doing some backing vocals? So I was in a booth with uh, Nicole Appleton singing. All right. Um, and then when that finished, I was kind of pinching myself a little bit. And then... Robbie said, um, well, don't fancy giving us a lift to the pub, dear. I was like, yeah, of course I can. And I remember they both had these massive puffer jackets on. You remember they used to wear, but these, these were Michelin man, like bright orange, both had bright orange, like colour coordinated. Anyway, I kind of squeezed them into my Fiat Uno, right? <laughs> like this in the back. Anyway, drove them to this country pub in the middle of nowhere, pulled up. I said, well, have fun, kids. And they were like, no, 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 come in. I was like, no, no, you're good. And she was like, no, 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 seriously, come in. I was like, look, I'm not coming in. And he looked at me, just went, come in. I went, oh, 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 okay. Awkward first date. Walked into this country pub. There's literally no one in there. And of course, celebrities, they don't carry cash, do they? Oh, God. So (laughs) after I'd got the drinks, sat down. I love it. Thought. Thought, I'm obviously here for a good reason. And then after about three and a half minutes reason, you can go now kind of thing. You know, like, oh, oh, there was a real attraction. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, oh, whoa, wow. that's me done. I better go then. And uh, and then pootled off and said, like, if you need a lift home, Love um, give us a shout. And he just went, no, but you give, lend us a tenner, will you, for a taxi? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that we, we used to meet. Um, also, it's a lot of top of the pops and stuff. They yeah. they were lovely. They really were really down to earth girls. I I I spent um, a Halloween with um, with Nicole once, and she was just she was just really really lovely. Uh, really really. She, lovely. Was, she, she was just lovely lovely girl. Good times. They're all such good times. Fun times. You know. Yeah. So can I ask you a bit about your voiceover career? Sure. So what? I, we've got a game, haven't we? That we occasionally play. So when I'm out driving. And I hear an advert on TalkSport. Shelley or not Shelley? Hmm. Shelley? Shelley, are you on the Haribo advert? She generally goes, no, darling. (laughs) Oh, okay. All right. And then occasionally, I think I've got it right, haven't I? Yes, you have. You you said, is that that your daughter and you together? Because my... Both my kids do voiceovers now. And, That's right. Um, yeah. So my son, since COVID, and I've got the studio upstairs now, I, I said to my agents, you know, why don't we, you know, see if the kids can do anything while they're here. And uh, they haven't stopped working, wow. bless them. Um, Amazing. Either that or the chimneys. So, um, <laughs> so my son Aaron is the voice of Thomas the Tank Engine no Channel way. 5. and he, wow. he audio books yeah it's, it's given him real confidence because he's very shy and it's given him confidence a lot of confidence to walk into a room and you know like at school a new school when they say you know can you tell us something interesting about yourself and they go oh I'm really good at football I, I dive really well and he goes and the voice of Thomas the Tank Engine and they'll go wow. you know it's lovely for him um but uh yes yeah, sometimes we uh, I've done I've done voiceovers with them as mummy and child mummy and daughter yeah. etc 
And uh, and that's when you texted me going, I'm I, sure. And, I- and the one I got right, I, I'm sure, was Range Rover, wasn't it? Correct, correct. And I and I was so sure. And I was like, I'm, I'm, shall I ask her, shall I not, shall I ask her, shall I not? Um, yeah, and, and you, I was right. That's amazing. That's amazing. She's 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 the voice for Dole Juice and and My Little Pony and things like that. And he he he, he does lots. Yes, yeah, I'm thrilled. It's like it's not passing the baton, but it's just it's just so lovely setting them up like this. You know, giving yeah. them. I don't know. Just a. I mean, it might not last. You know, once his voice breaks, once you know she's. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> well, Ringo Starr. It worked for him, didn't it? <laughs> it could... That's amazing. So does your husband? Does your husband do voiceovers as well? No, no, he doesn't. I've got a funny story, actually, because uh, one time um, a friend of mine was working on a film and he said, we need somebody to sing a song, just a drunk song. He needs to sound drunk. So we don't want him to be a good singer. And I said, I got just the guy for a year. <laughs> so I got, I got him this before we were married. And he said, but I want you to sing a lovely song. I want you to sing a song. So I sang this song, singing my heart out. And I'm a singer as well, you know, so sang my heart out. And then my husband comes in and first time ever with headphones and he's singing and it's perfect because he can't sing. So it was perfect, you know, like a drunkard. And I ended up on the cutting room floor and he made the movie. That's <laughs> show business. <laughs> what was the movie? I think it was called Oh Jerusalem, not the porn one. <laughs> 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 There's a porn one? Oh. Brilliant. And I, well, on that, on that tip show, if we're going down the acting route, so like you had a famous part didn't you which my step my stepson when i told him like i was going to interview you because you were in peep show weren't you i was oh my god of all, and then of when all... i told him the part he was like i've seen that i've seen that i'm like i bet you've seen that yeah. oh, give me new eyes give me new eyes he's scarred for life <laughs> that's amazing that yeah. character was just that it's so so like well, honestly, the, I think the twenty eighth time I watched it, it the twenty eighth time I had the charm, but the fifteenth time and the forty fourth <laughs> time had an aura about it. You know, but, yeah, it's a. Have you seen it, Pete? No, 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 I haven't. You, you have to go and see. Okay. You have to go and see this episode. It's just so funny. She's like the ultimate temptress in it, and it's but but we're, we're so belly laughingly funny. But have you got have you got a matching mug with your outfit though? That's what I want to know. I have, it would have to be. Black leather with yes. with contraption sticking out from it. If it was a match, <laughs> okay, okay. And I think I might. Um, smiley, Smiley, are you right to uh, are you right to finish this interview off? You're I think right. I might have to go and readjust myself. <laughs> I'm zoned out already, Pete. Thanks very much. <laughs> it was great fun to do. Again, I'm so lucky because I get to I get to be in things that you know part of history. Mm. You know, yeah. comedy history, peep show. You know. Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. You know, I'm I'm really, really lucky. Those, Every- those things are, are etched in history. And yes. the thing is, like, we all carry on working and we all do kind of varying degrees of, of stuff. But those things, they never go away, no. do they? Like, no. honestly, Pete, last week when you played at the O2, mm. like, you were like a child oh, yeah. with a new wow. toy. Yeah. Like, and, and it was so lovely to see that you were going, wow. I... I I want this so badly. Mm. And for somebody of your elder age, you know what I mean? It's lovely that you still <laughs> got that, that yearning oh, to do something new. I love new. that. I love that. You're so, <laughs> you are such an ass. You really are. But, have, but having said that, it was... It was an amazing. It's the first because I've not. I mean, you know, I'm I'm used to playing to sort of into the sort of like a couple of hundred people max these days, and it's like I walked out to eighteen hundred people. Uh, mm. And that to me was just like um, I was so I was literally shaking when I came off, but I wasn't shaking with nerves. I was just shaking because I was so excited. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking, how the hell has it taken me this many years to kind of like get to this point? And then, you know, what the hell does it feel like when you're, a, you know, you're doing Robbie yeah. Williams and you're going out in a stadium or, you know, right. just, you know, that must be amazing. I don't yeah. like people. Who, I don't like people who, who um who trivialise that either. Take it for granted. Like, and I think I think the longer, the older we all get, especially you, Pete, the, the older we get and the more we're still doing it for me is the thing. Mm. It's like, yeah. like I'm going on tour next month to America, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, 10 years ago, it'd be like, oh, yeah, sure, it's an American tour. Now, 
three years ago, I wondered whether I would ever do that again because of like COVID and and bands aren't going to America anymore, right? It's changing. The landscape's changing. So I'm so excited and so, but I tell you what, I'm so grateful, like so grateful. This is this is what I try and teach uh, try and teach the kids. You know, with the voiceovers, it m- might last, it might not, but to be grateful for everything you Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Single blessing. Absolutely. Important thing. I am so lucky that I've done every. I never wanted to be famous. I always just wanted to work and love what I did, mm. and every goal I set for myself. I did, I accomplished. So I wanted to do theatre, not just theatre West End. And I did two brilliant shows, total of like four years. Did I did presenting, uh, you know, the voiceovers. I've done comedy, I've done commercials, I've done hosting, you know, I, I you know, and I, the only thing I've got now, I would say, if I had to, you know, say something I still wanted to do, would be, you know, voice something to do for Disney. I do their voiceovers, their promos, and I've done a few uh, cartoons for Disney UK. But I would love to do a big Disney movie. But I'm so grateful because everything I've done, I've loved. I haven't worked a day in my life, really. Do you know, that? Is there any better thing to say than you've ticked all the boxes? I, th- I can't no. think of anything that, 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 that is more satisfying in life than to say, I wanted to do this, this and this and go, I've done it. Mm-hmm. And whatever happens next, like whatever you do next in, on your journey... It's a bonus, right? Because, and that's why I think it makes you more grateful. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's why this is full of stories that aren't a boast. It's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what. Hence why, and here's an exclusive. Yeah. When I'm in America, I'm going to start Clang 2 because oh. I've got this brainwave that yeah. because people have been sending in their own Clangs, I suddenly thought I'm going to call it Clang. Everybody's got one. Mm. And I'm going to base it around other people's Brilliant. stories, which obviously possibly will lead through a few of mine as well. But then everybody can be a part of it and everybody's got a chance to tell their clangs. Mm. So there you mm. go. Mm. Mm. A couple of kind of couple of questions for you, really, Shelley, because I mean, we're, we're, we're running out of time, which is a shame because I do think that, you know, you kind of dropped in there that, you know, you dropped in there that you did stage shows. You've done this. You've done. I mean, it's, I'd, I'd love to I'd, I'd love to have more time to sit and chat to you. But have you ever met Lara Croft? <laughs> have... No, sorry, not Lara Croft. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met have you ever met Angelina Jolie? I haven't. Do you know what? I think she was the most perfect Lara Croft. But Martin, again, go back to Martin, our contact. Yeah. Martin Glenn Murray was in the movie, was in the first Tomb Raider movie with her. So he was made he? Point, Yeah, he made a I can't remember what character he played, but he made a point of going up to her and saying, you know, oh my friend Shelley, she's the voice of Lara Croft and um she's probably like Security! Yeah. But, <laughs> But uh, no, apparently she she listened to my voice over and over and over to get the to get the. Um, wow, really? Yeah. To get her character? So yeah. you were the one she based it on you? Yeah. Well, I was oh. the I was yeah yeah I was because I was the original. But um, she, I'd love to meet her. But yeah. That, if, if ever we wanted a perfect send off and a perfect like end to this podcast, that's got to be it, right? That's it. I can't say anymore. Listen, you've been an absolute star and, and it's so lovely to see you. And listen, I'll be I'll be messaging you when I hear like the latest uh, advert that I go, hmm, is that her? You know, Pete, you're going to be doing it as well. I'm telling you, it's addictive. I know, I know. I'm already, I'm already sitting there thinking, did she? No. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, bless you, Shell. And thanks for being our wonderful guests. And uh, friends, we shall see you in two weeks' time for the next guest, who I can't tell you it is, and do you know why that is? Because we haven't done it yet. See you later. Bang, the podcast. <laughs>